In chapter 2, we are going to look at some spreadsheet models. We will also go through the best practices in modeling and how to format your models for best readability. So we'll be looking at six different problems in Excel. Okay, and here I'm going to just give you a brief introduction to the kind of topics that we'll be covering in this chapter. The Excel models that we will be looking at are relatively simple, and quite interesting models, and it can be scaled to larger applications, as you will see. Now in the modeling process, in Excel that we're going to be covering some frequently used functions and also some less well-known functions but very helpful functions and tools also. So we'll be covering a lot of new material and some review of some old material also that you may have already come across in Excel. But we'll be doing a lot of stuff in, in this chapter. Now when you look at spreadsheet model, okay, or any mathematical model for that matter. And there are certain elements that will be present in the modeling. And let's look at what those elements are. So you'll always have some inputs. And the inputs can be known and deterministic inputs, like for example, cost of making a product or labor hours needed to make a product. So these are internal numbers that are pretty well known and, and, and constant. And there may be some estimated numbers that you have to come up with. For example, what is the demand of, uh, uh, of the product going to be next, uh, next week or next period? So there may be some estimated numbers that will be used as input. And when we set the model up, we can do some what-if analysis with the estimated numbers. What if the estimate that we have come up with is not accurate. Maybe there is an error in our estimation. So we can try different what if type of analysis but by playing with the estimated number. And there are some other inputs which may be uncertain. So you see, even in the case of demand, you may not be able to precisely estimate what the demand is going to be. So you probably will come up with some probability estimate. Okay, Demand will be 100 units with probability 20%, 150 with 30% and so on. So if you may have inputs that are uncertain, so you have to associate some probabilities or some probability distributions with it. So you, you can, so you're going to have inputs, some of them will be known and constant, some of them you may have to estimate and some of them you may have, you may have to do more than simply estimation coming up with probability estimates and so on. The next element in spreadsheet modeling is called decision variables. Decision variables are the variables whose values we are after. We want to determine values for those decision variables. For example, how many units you have to produce of different products that you sell, or how much should be the order size, how many units should you order uh, with your vendor, and things like that. And you want to do that by some criteria. So maybe it is profit. Maybe it is cost. If it is profit, you want to come up with the values for the decision variables that will maximize the profit. If it is cost, you want to come up with values for the variables that will minimize the cost. And the output is uh, something that you calculate from the decision variables. So, for example, profit and cost that we just talked about. So, if these are the quantities for the decision variables, then from those quantities, then you calculate some output values. So the outputs are the values that we are interested in, and they are computed using the inputs and the decision variables, a combination of inputs. So for a given set of decision variable values, how much of labor hours will be used? How many units of raw materials will be needed? And what will be the profit that we will be making? So outputs are various values that you compute using the inputs and the decision variables. After setting up the model, okay, you can use the model in three different ways. Okay, you can use it to optimize the results. That is, optimize here would mean maximizing profit or minimizing cost. Or you can do sensitivity analysis. After you have set up the model, you change the inputs. We'll be doing a lot of sensitivity analysis in Chapter 3. So if you change some of these numbers, what will happen to the output? 
And then, of course, we want to prepare reports. We, we want to set up the model in such a way that when you print reports, this are readable and nicely presented. So these are very important aspects of modeling. Modeling is not only about getting the correct answers, but also presenting the answers in an engaging way, in a way that is understandable to the users. So let's look at some basic best practices. One of, one of the important aspects of modeling, as I just mentioned, is not just getting it right. Of course, that is a prerequisite. You have to get it right. You can't have a model that is wrong. But getting it right is not enough. You have to make the model more readable for a third-party user. If somebody else is looking at the model, they should be able to make sense out of it. And some of the things that you could do to make your model more readable, more understandable, is to make sure that you lay the model out in a clear and logical way. So when people read it, they can understand it properly. And you separate the parts out. So if you have one section for the inputs, one section for the computations that you make, and one section for the outputs that you're going to produce. So lay them out, separate them out, and put clear headings like these are these are the this is the input section and these are the different inputs okay these are the decision variables and these are what the decision variables mean and these are the outputs so separate them out give clear headings put a lot of labels beside the cells to make sure that the cells are properly understood now oftentimes range names will be very helpful when you set up formulas Okay, in Excel, when you set up formulas and if formulas use cell addresses like B20, B33 and so on, the formula will be a bunch of cell addresses and not very helpful in understanding how the formula is set up and what the formula is doing. So giving range names for cell addresses will be very helpful. So when you look at the formula, it will have the names of the inputs and names of the decision variables and that will be very helpful in understanding the formulas. Now, of course, you need to use nice formatting features like bolding. Not, don't bold everything, don't italic everything, and so on. So you have to use these very sparingly and judiciously, and the, uh, and the important consideration must be, does it make the model more readable, more understandable, and more pleasant to look at? Now, cell comments are, are very important way of making the spreadsheet more readable. So you can insert comments that will look, that will show up only when you hover over the cell. So you can, if you have a complicated input uh, that is not easy to explain in a cell adjacent, then you can put a comment there and explain how you got that number. So people who are interested can hover over the cell and and read your comments. And text boxes are very useful in explaining uh, general assumptions in the model and explanations for the model. And that's another way of making the Excel spreadsheet model more readable. Now, modeling itself, okay, of course, you want to make the model accurate so the formulas and the logic must be correct. So the model is correct and it does not have errors in the model. Now, you break down complicated formulas into smaller chunks. If you have a formula that is like, you know, has many different parts to it, it becomes very, very difficult to understand. We look at an example like that. So you break the formula down to smaller pieces and arrange them one after the other and then put them all together at the end. So that way, the formulas will be more understandable. So model must be more flexible for modification. You don't want to make it very rigid in the sense that you put the numbers itself. If you have inputs, don't use the input numbers in formulas. And when you do that, then the model becomes very rigid for that particular input values only. So you have to put the input values in cells and use cell addresses in the formulas, and that way it becomes more flexible. Now plan ahead before you do anything, plan and, and lay the spreadsheet out. And if you have to make revisions to make it more readable, more presentable, and make your revisions. So these are the ways in which you will make the model better. It's not just accurate, but accurate and more readable and more presentable. And here are the six models that we'll be going over. 
the Excel file names are here and you will see in the learning module I have inserted the files next to each video so you have to open the video open the Excel file uh, and then you go through the computations like how I I'm going through in the video you replicate all of that work with that shell file so you need to be able to produce the output that I am producing in the video tutorial you need to replicate all of that using these shell files so there are six of them okay and here on the third column I have described what are the different Excel concepts that are covered in each of those six Excel models and I also have uh, another table that explains what are the different terminologies what are the important concepts that are covered in those different six different models so you have to go through all of this carefully study them and also make sure that you go through each and every one of those six different models and generate all the output on your own using the video tutorial as the guide